During World War II, the Festiniog Mountains held an unusual secret. Oil paintings from the National Gallery of London were hidden for safety in the mining tunnels. West of Blenheim and seen from Porthmadog, a distinctive mountain rises for over 2,000 feet. Knicht was given its name by English sailors, for whom the triangular rock face resembled the helmet of a medieval knight. Between the Rhinog Mountains and Porthmadog is a wooded peninsula. It was here that architect Sir Clough Williams Ellis imagined creating a fanciful Italian village. His dream materialized as Port Merion, where Noel Coward wrote his ghost play Blythe Spirit. Shakespeare leans over a balcony and a stone boat never sinks. The peninsula's town of Penrindedraith is secluded by two estuaries, a small place with a long name, but it's simply Welsh for the location, on a rocky headland between two beaches. Centuries ago, from his favourite rock at Harlech, King Bram the Blessed looked over Cardigan Bay. At his death, he ended up facing France from the Tower of London, where his head only was buried to protect Britain from invasion. On Bram's rock, though, Edward I built Harlech Castle, 200 feet above the sea. Owen Glyndwr made his court here, but it was surrounded by the English, and his son-in-law died here of starvation. Later on, during a seven-year siege in the Wars of the Roses, the walls resounded to the song Men of Harlech. The sea and the besiegers, luckily, retreated from the castle long ago. Down the coast, beneath Caderidris, the beautiful Mouthach estuary flows inland from Barmouth to Dolgellai. Turner painted it, Darwin wrote The Descent of Man beside it, and Wordsworth rode up it. At the river's silvery mouth, above the railway bridge, four and a half acres of cliffland became the first property in 1895 of a respectable society, the National Trust. In the town below, a small round building was a lockup for the more boisterous and drunken members of society. Kadair Idris takes its name from a local hero, Prince Idris, who died fighting the Saxons. But he lives on as a giant who strode across the Maudach and used the mountain as his chair. Withnor was father to Idris, and he ruled over a proud and prosperous land. Then one wild night, the keeper of the sea wall got drunk, and the salty waters surged in. Church bells still ring at Abedavi beneath the waves. Upriver at Machantleth, Owen Glyndwr was crowned Prince of Wales. Like many royals, Owen had family problems. His cousin, a man of great stature, loosed an arrow at him whilst out hunting deer. The prince survived, but his cousin disappeared. Years later, a large skeleton was found in the deer park, stuffed inside a hollow oak tree. From Machantleth to Corris, a steam railway ran to serve the slate quarries. There's no railway now, but the Centre for Alternative Technology has been recycled from one disused quarry. A less green alternative is Britain's first inland nuclear power station, now closed down, which recycled the reservoir waters of Trausvanith. This unnatural lake was created in 1930 to supply water for the reactive residents of Liverpool. In the village, a statue commemorates a local shepherd whose poetry won him the bardic chair at the 1917 Eisteddfod, just after he'd been killed fighting in France. The chair was swathed in black. 
The long, straight road alongside Trausvanith isn't Roman, but the Roman road of Sarn Helen and their fort at Tomena Myr lie in the moors above. For 150 miles, Sarn Helen runs from Caerhyn in the north to Carmarthen down south. Another Roman road passes through Tomena Myr from Sigontium to Caer Gai near Bala. 400 years after the Romans, Caer Gai became the home of Kay and his foster brother Arthur. Then one magic day, Arthur pulled a sword from a stone to become king of the Britons. During the 18th century, the men, women and children of Bala knitted woolen garments. That mad English monarch, George III, always wore their stockings to warm his rheumatic legs. Bala became a religious stronghold. From her cottage beneath the castle of Castellabere, a young girl set out for the town. Mary Jones walked barefoot for 25 miles in order to buy a Bible. When she reached the town, the clergyman had none to sell, so he gave her his own. In 1865, a ship sailed from Liverpool for Argentina with 153 Methodists, mainly from Bala, on board. In Patagonia, they were free at last to speak the Welsh language. Edward I brought Wales under English rule in the 13th century. The first castle and town to be built during his battles with Llewellyn the Last were at Flint. One hundred years later, King Richard surrendered to his usurper, the future Henry IV, in the castle. When Richard left for London to abdicate his throne, his fickle greyhound deserted him for a new master. Rhythlan was the second of Edward's castles, and, like them all, it had to be able to withstand a siege. So that it could be supplied by ships, a new channel was dug for the river Cluid, making Rhythlan into a port despite being two miles from the sea. Both Rhythlan and Flint were overseen by Edward's pet architect, Master James. He also designed Denby, a more sophisticated yet unfinished castle. Its completion was entrusted to Henry de Lacy, who lost interest when his eldest son died plunging down the well. Across from the Denby Moors, a Sputty Ivan lies cradled in bandit country. The hospice was founded by 12th century crusaders, the Knights of St. John, as a peaceful sanctuary for travellers, safe from the laws of the land. A Sputty became the haunt of villains like the ruthless Red Savage Gang, all of whom were hanged. In the next valley, at Penmachno, Jorweth the Broken Nose was buried. He had been heir to the Kingdom of Gwynedd, but wasn't allowed to take control because of his irregular face. Jorweth retreated to his timber castle by the river meadows of Dolwyth Ellen. His son, Llewellyn the Great, built a stone castle nearby on the flanks of lonely Moyle Shabbat. This distinctive mountain has on its summit an enclosure. Victorian guides use it for their ponies, resting after carrying up tourists. Behind Moyle Shabod is a famous view, the Snowdon Range beyond the lakes of Mimbir. In Victorian times, 12 shillings or 60 new pence would buy you a pony ride up Snowdon from Llamberis, and the guide would take your luggage on his back. Of course, if you're very fit, you can always run up it in 30 minutes via the pig track. <laughs>